minutes to speak on the superintendent's proposed FY 2024 operating budget. This public hearing is not the forum to speak on any other topics. I ask speakers to observe the three minute limit and conclude remarks when time has expired and you hear the tone. Okay, the first speaker tonight is Ms. Simpkins. Um, sure, right there is good. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Chairwoman Lecter, board members, Dr. Williams, and the BCPS community. My name is Zemiri Simpkins, and I'm here today as chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee for Gifted and Talented Education. Some of you may also remember me from four years ago when I appealed to you a great acceleration for my son. And I cannot tell you how much of a difference you made in his life by approving his request. He's continuing to excel and just recently uh, ranked number one uh, percentile in the PSATs. And I could not be more proud of him, but it's also thanks to you. As you are starting to work on next year's budget, I would like to stress the importance of supporting gifted and talented education in Baltimore County. Code of Maryland Regulations, Comar Chapter 13A.04.07, requires that all Maryland schools identify and serve gifted and talented students. BCPS policy and rule 6401 also recognize the GT students require appropriately differentiated programs and services beyond those normally provided by schools. Currently, around 30,000 students, or 27% of BCPS population in grades 4 through 12, are taking various GT or advanced academics programs. The current budget proposes only one resource teacher, one staff member, and one coordinator to stay in that office. Currently, that office is responsible for serving 30,000 students and maintaining BCPS's compliance with state and local laws. And the office has four resource teachers. Back in 2019, it had eight resource teachers. And then in 2020, it was cut to four. So if you cut it to one resource teacher, here's what you will find in terms of the implications. These resource teachers, are primarily responsible for developing gifted and talented curriculum and training teachers at schools on how to implement that GT curriculum. Their role today is more important than ever because recently BCPS has adopted so-called canned curriculum packages from different commercial publishers. For example, Bridges is now used in elementary schools. Illustrative Mass is used in middle schools. Neither of these packages have appropriately differentiated instruction for GT students. For this year, the Office of Advanced Academics made a makeshift plan and was planning to develop true curriculum for the future. But if you cut the staff to just one resource teacher, they will not be able to do it. So we appeal to you to increase their resource teachers to five instead of one. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jessica Paffenbarger. Did I get that right? Okay. Paffenbarger. Okay, thank you. Okay, you can hear me? Yes. Okay. Hey, good evening, Chairwoman Lichter, board members, Dr. Williams, and the BCPS community. My name is Jessica Paffenbarger, Vice Chair of the Citizens Advisory Committee for Gifted and Talented Education, a BCPS advisory group. The BCPS budget must meet the needs of all 110,000 students, but this proposed budget shows BCPS ignoring almost one third of its students, the 30,000 GT twice exceptional and advanced learners who participate in advanced academic programs. BCPS has purchased curricula for mathematics and language arts for elementary and middle schools that do not include adequately differentiated GT or advanced content. How can the Office of Advanced Academics create advanced curricula for students with the proposed budget only providing for one resource teacher instead of four? And this follows a 2020 cut from eight resource teachers and fulfill their other obligations. This shows BCPS continuing a recent trend to not support appropriate advanced educational services. 
The OAA supports on-site staff at all 178 BCPS schools, helping identify who requires advanced curricula, writing curricula, training staff in the nuances of educating GT learners, since most colleges don't offer a course for teachers in training, and more. OAA staff are experts in these areas, and their expertise is leveraged throughout the school system to assist educators and families. Code of Maryland regulations require all Maryland schools to identify and serve GT students. BCPS and the board's policy and rule 6401 state that GT students require appropriately differentiated programs and services beyond those normally provided by the regular school program. So this proposed budget will also undermine BCPS's implementation of state law and BCPS's own policy and rule regarding GT students. Without advanced curricula, students may become bored in class, tune out or get into mischief. Often test scores go down below ability level because students are not engaged and challenged. In elementary school, my oldest daughter was well known for reading a book under her desk because she finished her assignments early and had no advanced work to continue with. Currently, BCPS has a catchphrase on the Board of Education property sign and on the website, raising the bar, closing gaps, and preparing every student for the future. And the budget video current content states, student learning is our main priority and at the core of all of our work. The proposed budget cuts to the OAA speak a lot louder than these words on the sign and on the website. Please amend the proposed budget to remove the cuts to the Office of Advanced Academics and to increase the resource teachers to five, two for elementary, two for middle, and one for high school, to get GT education moving in a more positive direction to meet the needs of our students. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next speaker is Cindy Sexton. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Dr. Williams, and members of the board. Way back in Dr. Williams' report on the 100-day entry plan, he stated that our priorities must squarely focus on what is best for our students in every neighborhood and school across the county. Those words are still applicable. You've heard me say that effective teachers are the most important factor in contributing to student achievement and that statement is also a BCPS core value. And you have heard me speak countless times about the need to recruit and retain educators. This must be a priority. While overall enrollment has declined, our ELL and special education students have increased, and we need to make sure there are educators in place to meet the needs of those students. But certainly not just those students. Our students living in poverty has also risen. Community schools can help address some of those concerns and needs around poverty if the program is properly and effectively implemented, but those students need teachers. Because they may be coming with gaps in readiness to learn, we need teachers to fill in those gaps. It keeps coming back to recruiting and retaining educators. I often speak of career earnings. BCPS has made strides in moving up the ladder in Maryland, but we still aren't where we need to be. As the third largest school system, that isn't okay. While we are still in negotiations for salary for next year, I urge this board to include the salary compression that was agreed to but not funded last year. I want to be sure the system has in place a plan for attracting, recruiting, and retaining educators. Properly staffed schools will help improve learning outcomes and help address discipline concerns. TABCO, as always, stands at the ready to work with the system so we can get the educators our students need and deserve. We continue to be in new, unprecedented situations where the goalposts keep moving. Through it all, our educators are there for our students, doing all they can to meet their needs, social, emotional, mental health, physical, and yes, academic as well. Now more than ever, we need to make sure our focus is on the people who make a difference in the lives of our students, our educators. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Erica Ma.
Good evening. My name is Erica Ma, and I'm a parent and a teacher in Baltimore County. I'd like to start with asking for a second public hearing about the budget. While it is wonderful that you've given time for public comment tonight, the notice was less than a week and over holiday weekend. With the budget released just last week, the quick turnaround for public comment does not give the public adequate time to thoroughly understand and process this very large and complex budget. To start off, according to a TABCO analysis of the budget, there are a number of items that are inaccurate in their calculations. There were a number of discrepancies where the district's reported 2023 adjusted percentage change was lower than the actual percent change for the 24 proposed budget. Strikingly, those included instructional textbook and supplies listed as a 42.7 increase while actually being 74.5, and other instructional costs listed as 41.6 while being 71.2%. So my second comment is to please check the math so that folks can accurately analyze the budget. Doing my best to understand and look through the budget, my first comment, my next comment, is about the magical 700 number that is still being used to decide administrative staffing for elementary schools. 700 is a lot of students. However, the workload for school administration does not just magically double once the school population hits 700. It's not halved when a school then drops down to 697. It's not so cut and dry. Some schools have significantly higher farms rates and all the issues that come with poverty. And those schools may not have 700 students. Some schools have regional programs that demand additional support. And those schools may not have 700 students. Some schools have higher ESOL populations, more staff turnover that leads to new teachers needing more support. Some schools do not have SDT, SDT teachers or other resource staff. And some schools may not qualify for free and reduced lunch, but are just below that threshold but those schools may also not have 700 students. There needs to be other considerations when staffing beyond student number in order to be truly equitable to the needs of schools and students. We have stuck to the 700 number for far too long and to the detriment of our children and staff. It is also my understanding that we are here for comment, but also to ask questions. I've not spent much time watching BOE decisions on curriculum, but I have worked on national curriculum development in the past and do see and hear what is being used and not in the classrooms. So my question is, why are we spending money on curriculum materials and then more money on the development of curriculum? There are curriculums out there that, are, that work based on national standards and have been fully piloted. We are buying them and then only using bits and pieces of them. And then we have in-house curriculum that is also based on national standards and piloted. And we're using them to supplement or take place some of the purchased curriculum. Why are we doing both? Perhaps the money would be better spent on raising teacher salary in anticipation of the blueprint requiring higher salaries, but also attract teachers so that if we do need to write curriculum, the resource teachers can actually do that job instead of being pulled into classrooms. Finally, my last 10 seconds as an ESOL teacher, thank you very much for the additional 36 teachers allotted for ESOL next year, and I hope that will be fully funded by the county executive and council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Darren Bedillo. Good evening. Good evening, board and Dr. Williams. My name is Darren Badillo. I'm a concerned father of two children who attend BCPS, but also the outreach coordinator for the Baltimore County Parent and Student Coalition. Thank you for this time today. We need to start having real conversations. We need to stop funding failing programs. We are two and a half years into Dr. Williams' eight-year plan called The Compass. Dr. Williams' vision was implemented in the 2020, 2021 through 2028. We want to believe in our leadership. It is very hard when we see little to if any positive results. What justifies funding this long-term compass plan when we not have, have not seen positive impact in our students' reading, math, and proficiency rates in the past two years actually scores worsen. It appears if we continue to fund this program, we will continue to lower the bar and fail our children. The Compass plan is failing. We have not seen improvement in test scores here in Baltimore County, but also here in Baltimore County, we have seen an increase in suspensions, the most in Maryland. Shouldn't we be looking at performance measures identified in the Compass? On page 127, and make adjustments to ensure success, moving the needle in the right direction. Here's the page 127. In reference, notice how blank it is and goals are for 2023, 2024. 
We need to fund program staffing and training. Without good programs, qualified staff, and training and support, it will never reach the kids. These are the top concerns of BCPS parents, safety. We need additional resources and security in those schools who continue to have issues with fights. We know the knife attack last week in BCPS. We have a top heavy. How do we have so many high paid administrators with failing grades and low proficiency rates? The money is not trickling down to where it needs to be, and that's in the classroom. There is a perception of lack of urgency regarding these two issues. If we fail the kids year after year, the reason is because the adults are, not do are doing something wrong. How does this budget fund programs, staffing, and training that will show measurable improvements in academic, uh, academic uh, outcomes and hold the system accountable to do better? Also, parents are, say there's lack of resources for children who are behind and lost learning due to the pandemic, but also parents want more resources and funds towards higher education, trade school, and connecting children with jobs and opportunities after school. Let's continue to make adjustments to ensure each BCS student has a safe and quality education. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Lloyd Allen. Good evening, Chair Lichter, Vice Chair Harvey, Superintendent Williams, and members of the board. Thank you for your time tonight. I'm Lloyd Allen, Special Educator in Mathematics, speaking as an individual. Ratios and subs. Ratios. Comparing FY23 adopted budget, page 143, to FY24 proposed budget, page 127, I'm noticing that the student-teacher ratios indicate a proposed increase in class size for elementary and high schools while remaining steady for middle school. In particular, for FY24, high school class size aspires to an average of 29.2 students. If we want teachers to learn their students, give timely feedback, identify learning gaps, and notice changes in behavior, then 29 is too high. Curricula are expected to move at a fixed, rapid pace. When class size is too high, each student has a smaller share of teacher attention. The teacher has less chance to recognize that the student missed a concept from two years ago, much less give the student a new way to approach that concept that might work for them and make today's lesson attainable. When class size is too high, there is less of a chance that they will hear their name from a teacher used in a positive way during the course of the lesson. Their share of teacher attention during independent practice is smaller. This has impacts on academics and even SEL, which leads to impacts on school safety. In that same chart, I see that in FY23 adopted, high schools have 40 department chairs for each teacher. And in FY24, both middle and high schools are allocated 2.1 department chairs per school. The verbiage indicates that these positions are specifically for the math, science, English, and social studies to be able to have reduced teaching loads in order to support the teachers in those departments, the tested content areas. Typically, each department, even non-tested, has a chair. And these chairs have significant responsibilities, both in leading PD and with the daily operation of the building. With or without the allocation, chairs are overworked, whether general ed, special ed, tested area, or other. FY24 page 9 suggests that enrollment is growing. Help me understand why page 12 has a reduction in instructional salaries and wages, the only general fund category with a reduction and directly following an increase in both levels of administration. Substitutes. I see that there is a $2 million line item in the FY23 adopted on page 22. In FY24 proposed on page 290, I hope that I'm reading incorrectly with a $22.8 million item for contracted services. That, that would be exponential growth. I hope that I misunderstand something. I'm hearing middle school teachers say that they are still doing coverage because there still aren't subs. Hiring a contractor is not a silver bullet, but it is certainly expensive. Please help me to understand that we are not increasing the substitute budget by tenfold each year over the last two years. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Pandora Jones. Okay, Pandora Jones. And our last speaker is um, Ms. Kathleen Causey. Hello. Hello. 
My name is Kathleen Causey, and I'm a former member of the Board of Education of Baltimore County. It's great to see you all, and thank you for your service. Uh, before I talk specifically about the proposed fiscal year 2024 operating budget that was presented to the board and the public on January 10th, I would like to make two points. The board's review of any proposed budget, asking questions about proposed spending, projected spending versus actual spending, and making motions to make changes to the budget if applicable, are very much a part of the governance role of the Board of Education. The other general point is that oftentimes how money is spent is just as important as how much money there is to spend. On page six of the January 10th presentation, it includes a footnote clarifying that the $3.6 million of cost reduction associated with a reduction of central office resource teachers excludes additional cuts to central office management. The most recent data published by MarylandPublicSchools.org shows that BCPS has the highest number of non-instructional directors, coordinators, and supervisors of any LEA in Maryland. In fact, BCPS has 163 more positions in this category uh, than Montgomery County, even though Montgomery County has 50,000 more students than BCPS. These issues of central office positions versus schoolhouse positions was addressed in the public works report commissioned by the county executive. It would behoove the board, the county council, and the county executive to review the implementation of the public works recommendations around this topic. Note that the board did not have additional dedicated staff to assist with this effort. Uh, regarding ELA curriculum, page 21 references a one-time expense of $10.4 million for a new ELA curriculum. Multiple presentations to the board indicated that the new curriculum would allow all students to see themselves in books, yet recently released findings from a well-respected education justice research and organizing collaborative at NYU Steinhardt assert that BCPS's proposed new curriculum was one of three K through five curriculums found to be culturally insufficient or worse, culturally destructive. And there are specific uh, statements about proposed new curriculum being one that uses language and tone that demeans and dehumanizes black, indigenous, and characters of color while unevenly encouraging empathy. These assertions are troubling and should be investigated and considered before any new contract is signed or any new monies are allocated in this budget. I will send the board uh, and the superintendent the full report tomorrow. Uh, while, regarding support personnel, while I appreciate the FTE increases shown on slides 17 and 18, I remain very concerned that this proposed budget does not include an increase in critical support staff Thank you. Thank you. That ends our public speakers for the board hearing. One second. The next item on the agenda is announcements. The board's next meeting will be held on Tuesday, January 24th, 2023 at 6.30 p.m. Thank you for joining us this evening. This hearing is now concluded. At this time, the board will go into closed session.